Hey y'all, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Shantae Marie here, and I appreciate you guys so much for tuning in to yet another episode in the series of retaking your ASVAB or taking your ASVAB or trying to get a higher score on your ASVAB or just trying to pass the ASVAB in general. Thank you guys to everyone who's new who's just recently subscribed to my channel. If you are new here and this is your first video, make sure that you are going ahead and clicking the subscribe button so that you can continue to see more videos like this. I do a lot of different things here on my channel because I'm a lifestyle vlogger and I appreciate it so, so much. So let's jump right in to what we're going to be talking about for this video. going to give you guys final tips for scoring a good score on your ASVAB. So a lot of the ASVAB test is math related and I wanted to share with you guys the tips for the math content that I think may help you the best and I'm going to go ahead and just jump right into the 11. So the first thing you want to make sure that you understand how to do is simplifying fractions. There is a specific method for every number, so like one digits, two digits, three digits, there's a specific method for how you can simplify that and I will have that listed in the down bar for you guys. You also wanna make sure that you know your prime numbers. This is going to help you to realize if something can be simplified or not. You wanna know the difference between ratios and rates. There is a difference and that is going to be kind of a big factor on your test. I have quite a few questions on mine that dealt with this concept. The biggest thing to remember with ratios and rates is that a ratio is a comparison of two like things while a rate is a comparison of two unlike things. You also wanna know how to set up proportions and how to solve math problems using proportions. You can literally use a proportion for almost every single math problem on the ASVAB. And I know people keep questioning like, how long have you been in the military? Uh, when was your most recent ASVAB test? Or like, they just think that I'm making this information off of a whim or off of a test that I took forever ago. I have been in the military for seven years, but I did just retake the ASVAB test last week. So I am also basing this information off of the test that I just took not even seven days ago. You wanna make sure that you understand percentages. Percentages are also frequently asked on the ASVAB test, whether it's the arithmetic reasoning or the uh, mathematics knowledge portion. Both of those had percentages on them. You may have to set up proportions. You may need to know uh, how to increase and decrease percentages. Percentages are very important for understanding on your ASVAB test. Conversions, I cannot stress this enough. Conversions were so difficult for me because I just never have to use them in my job or really anything in life. Uh, when I say conversions, you wanna make sure that you know like how many pounds are in a ton, what a yard consists of, what a gross is, a dozen. You wanna make sure that you know those conversions because those little tiny factors can stump you on your test. Geometry. Geometry was kind of important as well. I, I think there were at least five questions just in the mathematics knowledge part alone for me that had to do with geometry. So when I say geometry, you wanna know perimeter, volume, and area. Those conversions are going to be important for you. Okay, so one of the numbers that I had was the percentage increases and decreases, which I already talked about before, but basically uh, you're going to want to know how to set up percentages as they increase or decrease in a proportion chart. So I'm going to insert what exactly what I'm talking about right now so that you guys can understand what I mean by setting it up in a proportion because there's a specific format for percentage increases and decreases. The other thing is to make sure that you understand simple interest and how it works. So there are problems that will say, 
Jane purchased a house for $85,000. The interest rate was 6%. How much interest did Jane owe annually? So you're gonna have to know how to set that up in a proportion so that you can answer a question like that. And there was definitely quite a few of those questions on my ASVAB test. The next thing is gonna sound kind of weird, but it's actually people time. So people time problems. I have everything written down, but for a people time problem I wrote, it's going to be a word problem that has people in it. It's going to have time in it. And it's going to have a job in it and the job has to remain the same throughout the problem. So an example of this would be, if it takes Jaden three hours to clean his room, how long would it take if a friend helped? So Jaden is going to be the people, three hours is going to be the time, and the job is cleaning his room. So you wanna know how to set that up in a proportion so that you can solve that problem. The last thing that I really feel is important, and this is something that I never would have thought of to be on an ASVAB test or to be important, but it is, is to understand inclusive dates. There will be problems that specifically say, if you started a job on July 5th, how many days will it take you to finish the job if the job ends on September 1st. And if it says that, then that means that it's not inclusive. If it is inclusive, it's going to have the word inclusive in the problem. So if you switched up that word problem, it would say, if you started a job July 5th, and how many days would it take for you to finish the job inclusively if the job ended September 1st? So you wanna make sure that you read whether or not the problem says inclusive, and you also wanna make sure that you understand what days of the month have 30 or 31 days. Also remember February only has 28 days, except in the case of a leap year, but my teacher informed me that she has never seen an ASVAB test that has a leap year in it. There are so many ways to remember what months have 30 or 31 days in it. There's the fist method where you count each knuckle on your hand. The teacher taught me that, YouTube that, if that's something you've never heard of. Or you can do the 30 days half September and then whatever whatever that saying is. Uh, but yeah, that is going to conclude this video. Make sure you guys check out the description bar below because I am putting the 300 words that you need to look up the synonyms for as well as the definitions to make sure that you understand those. And if you're unfamiliar with what I'm talking about with that, check back on my previous ASVAB videos because I explain the whole process for that and why it's necessary for you to understand that. I'll have it linked up here for you guys and I'll also have that in the down bar below. I also am going to include some math problems that I received as homework in the course that I took for retaking the ASVAB that I think would really help you to be able to just practice your basic math skills. I will take a picture. I think I'm gonna put that actually in a Google Drive document for people to check out. And I thank you guys so much for tuning into these videos. I have received a way bigger response to these videos than I honestly expected. If you guys make sure that you follow me on social media like Snapchat and Instagram, I do answer questions for you guys on there. Coming up on my YouTube channel, I am going to be competing in summer shredding, so there will be a lot of videos to that, but I will still make sure to incorporate more military videos into my weekly YouTube upload schedule. So if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe, turn on notifications, and I will catch you guys in my next video. Bye guys.